unlike the Remain campaign, most of the Leave campaign's key arguments were based on constitutional and legal, legal issues. Um, and therefore, it's, it's, it's relatively open, relatively easy for a constitutional lawyer like me um, to investigate and to evaluate uh, the main planks of what the Leave campaign had to say. And on that basis, I really do have no hesitation whatsoever um, in concluding that Leave conducted one of the most dishonest political campaigns this country has ever seen. I think one of the most infamous political slogans of the 20th century was that if, if you're going to tell a lie, um, tell big lies. Don't tell small lies because people catch you out on small lies. Um, tell giant lies because most people are basically decent, they're basically trusting, um, and they would never really believe that anyone could be dishonest on such a massive scale. But I'm afraid that's probably what has happened in the UK over the last several months. Um, the, the, the ideologues who make up the bulk of the Leave campaign um, have conducted a, 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 a campaign which, which relied very heavily upon systematic dishonesty. And by doing so, by, by normalising and by legitimising this type of dishonesty as a primary tool to win votes, um, I, I'm afraid that, uh, that, that Leave have inflicted quite untold damage upon the quality of our national democracy. I'm more fearful that many of the people who voted Leave, genuinely believing um, that they were going to get the things that they'd been falsely promised, are only on, going to end up feeling more disenfranchised, more marginalised, more angry. Now that Leave have secured their victory, um, the, 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 their main uh, campaigners seem to be standing back and saying, well, well we don't have any plan. Um, we have no idea what comes next. Um, almost, what, what are you asking us for? Um, now, Leave convinced um, many, many, many people in this country to tear up one of the fundamental pillars upon which the UK has evolved politically, economically, socially, diplomatically for a period of over 40 years. And it's only now that, that, that they're saying, um, we don't have a plan, we have no idea what comes next. And that does strike me, um, and I mean this more rhetorically, obviously, than in any strict legal sense, as, as really criminally irresponsible. But that has left us all in the midst of a constitutional crisis. Now, many lawyers are, are offering very important contributions about what the constitutional rules and what the constitutional limits are that should determine how we resolve our constitutional crisis. We're talking about the sovereignty of Parliament, the idea that the referendum result is not actually legally binding, that our sovereign Parliament can legislate as it pleases. We're talking about the relationship between the prerogative powers of the government and the, the need for parliamentary legislation, perhaps. And, and without making any particular judgment about these important legal debates, I suppose my view is that, that essentially this is a political crisis and it needs to have a political solution. And the responsibility for responding to this referendum result really lies with the government and parliament. In whatever combination of constitutional power emerges, it's an essentially a, a political judgment about what's now best for the country. And I think there were important arguments on both sides. On the one hand, we had a referendum. The Prime Minister indicated that the government would respect the outcome of that referendum, and a slim but appreciable majority of the people who voted, voted to leave. Um, and so I think there is clearly a strong democratic imperative which says that that vote should be respected, whatever its flaws, whatever the consequences. On the other hand, I don't think there's any doubt that, that large numbers of people across the country don't really accept the legitimacy of this referendum um, result, precisely because they regard it as having been procured through systematic dishonesty. And moreover, as the short-term and the longer-term consequences of leaving the EU begin to emerge more clearly, um, we have to remember that both the government and parliament have a heavy but entirely proper constitutional responsibility to protect the national interests of this country. Um, and that includes asking the question, whatever the answer, at least asking the question, how far is it in the national interest um, to execute this referendum result? And let's not forget, by the way, that certain Leave campaigners have a decidedly one-sided view of our democracy. Uh, we should recall that within moments of the polls closing on the 23rd of June, that Nigel Farage, when he thought that Remain had won this referendum, appeared before the national media, openly questioning the legitimacy of the entire poll, promising that he wouldn't accept the outcome, that he would, as he put it, continue until he had won his war. Um, so it appears that some people's commitment to democracy uh, only really goes so far as democracy gives them the answer they want to hear. Thank <laughs> you.